a couple of weeks ago, the idea of a Russian military intervention in Ukraine seemed unthinkable. Well, the arrival of Russian troops in Crimea last weekend has shown the world that the Russian president is willing to embark on reckless adventures on the EU's doorstep. How should the European Union react and respond to Vladimir Putin's new confrontational style? This is our brand new studio at the European Parliament in Brussels. Welcome to Talking Europe. And let me introduce you to uh, my guest today, Charles Tannock. Welcome to Talking Europe. You're a British MEP from the Conservatives and Reformists. You're the uh, Conservative Coordinator on the Foreign Affairs Committee here at the European Parliament. Also with us, Tatiana Zdanok. Welcome. You're a Latvian MEP from the Group of the Greens slash European Free Alliance. Uh, <coughs> now, you belong to a Latvian party that represents uh, your country's large Russian-speaking community. Yeah. And also with us, Marek Szywiec. You're from Poland, from the group of Socialists and Democrats, member of the Foreign Affairs Committee uh, and of the EU-Ukraine delegation. Uh, you, you also served as a, as a chair of this delegation. Let me start with you, Charles Tannock. What was the view from London? Is this a new Cold War? Well, my view and my group's view is that this, as a result of brazen aggression by Putin, I don't think all of Russia, because the majority of Russians don't necessarily agree with him, Putin has decided to capitalize on the chaos and confusion after a revolutionary situation and basically move his troops into Crimea and on a pack of lies and disinformation and massive black propaganda from the whole machinery behind him in the Kremlin to try and take over territory of, of the Republic of Ukraine. And it's a violation of international law, the UN Charter, the OSCE understandings and the Budapest assurances to Ukraine when they gave up their nuclear weapons. It's an absolute outrage and he mustn't be allowed to get away with it in my view. Tatiana Zdanok, uh, you heard how Europe, how the United States condemned what they regard as a gross aggression of, uh, and violation of Ukraine's territorial integrity. What do you respond to? I think the, the whole story of Ukraine's session started a little bit earlier, and we can uh, start with September, but uh, in October, when Yanukovych was ready to sign the association agreement, the European Parliament passed the resolution. B two big political groups voted in favor, uh, EPP, uh, socialists, uh, that uh, in fact announcing Cold War against Russia, the wording of critical engagement, which was before then used for Belarus only, was used. So uh, it, uh, what it is, is it specifically a problem who in the has announced that you call, this, this Cold War. What is it in the wording that you thought heralded a new Cold Strategic War? Strategic partnership would be the good answer, but unfortunately the whole story of Eastern partnership was investigated to just to uh, prolongate this thinking of the Cold War. Uh, I think it would be much easier to uh, to discuss around this table uh, if uh, Madame Zdanok come back from the virtual uh, reality to, to the real world. And uh, actually, I uh, I'm in the Parliament uh, uh, every session, and I cannot remember any aggressive uh, or n unfriendly wording uh, uh, focused against against Russia. You're telling the, us this, this partnership story. with Ukraine well, was uh, not against well, Russia. There was no threat to this Russia is, whatsoever. This is, this is, this is, this is, uh, this is obvious. The, the, there were never any questions. Russia had no interest in the Eastern partnership since the beginning. I, I understand why, but, but this is the truth. So if we start to, to describe the, the reality, real reality, we, should, uh, we cannot escape from from basic facts. The basic facts are that legal Ukrainian president refused uh, to sign association and he had the right to do that. And the second fact is that the massive uh, opposition came out uh, and the Maidan has begun and people didn't like this decision and nobody explained them why this decision was taken. And then the massive violence against these people has begun and hundreds of people were killed uh, and these are facts and we cannot uh, describe in the situation escape from this simple yeah, real, the, reality. The problem Madame of Yanukovych was that he misled no, no, I don't, his I don't know what is your problem. I don't know what is your problem. Party Before you the start to speak about Yanukovych, try to describe your 
your problem and come back to the reality. Get out from the virtual reality. I am reality. very sorry. I know Ukraine very well. I was living there for, for, for months. I defended Probably my thesis. I defended my thesis in Donetsk in 90, uh, 980. Yes, and nobody, by the way, this spoke, do not spoke exist. Ukrainian. Soviet Union. That's a Soviet, 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 Soviet Ukraine is very different. You see, we cannot start new life from 20 years ago. The whole story and the whole problem is the dissolution of this immediate dissolution of one body, of one state, and announcement uh, of 15 national states. It is not the case. But the borders were, excuse me, excuse the me, borders the were miners, artificially the miners, created. Gorbachev said the miners of the Donbass, yeah. who spoke perfect Russian, they voted for independence from Moscow and the dissolution of the Soviet Union and the yeah. setting up of a new independent Ukraine. And, and the problem with people like you yeah. and Putin mm -hmm. is that you do not wish to recognize that the Soviet empire is finished, the czarist dream is finished, Putin's dream of reconstituting people. a Soviet empire is not possible. These are, in, these are independent countries who have a right to determine their own future. And you cannot use the army of Russia to impose the Kremlin's view on the people of Ukraine. Why do you think that these borders of 15 republics are real ones, another borders of people, of autonomies, of cultures, of languages. There are many, there are are many borders exist. which are not. Yes, yeah, there are many borders. Many borders yeah, like that. You can't, gifts, you can't change them by force, Mr. Dunn. Let, let, me, just, let, let me just step in here. What, what? Basic remark about the borders. All the borders uh, b b b between all the states created after the Soviet Union were approved by Moscow. All, every single, single piece of the border. So it was decision of uh, Russian Stalin. Federation, of a Russian Federation and Yeltsin who became the first president. Everything with Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, every border was approved by and, Moscow. And so don't complain about that. No. Don't, don't complain. Don't the Communist the Party said that up in the 1930s, most of the strategies of people who were sacrificed of this uh, sign I, I the of Yeltsin of and Can we just ask, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that the supporters yeah. of do you think, you do, you think, this, uh, do you think that the 1930s solution used by Hitler to change borders by military intervention is justified this year in 2014. That is what Putin thinks, that he can go in there with the army and he can take away Crimea, even though it's internationally recognized, included by Russia in the 1994 assurances, they recognize the border. Included by Khrushchev. You, every, you every, misunderstand I'm sorry, what the, is Russia, what is Moscow. Independent Russia Federation, independent Russian Federation in 1994 agreed to the borders of Ukraine, including Crimea. You cannot or arbitrarily, by military force, change borders no. like Putin. And Kiev, you can also say Russia, because Kiev is the capital of Russia. It's oh, a no. native... We're not going to rewrite the history of Ukraine here, but I have Russia. a... a there is a central law question. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't. There is a central yeah. question here. There is a large Russian-speaking community in Ukraine. Vladimir Putin says that we... following the events in Ukraine, these people are no longer represented in Kiev under the new authorities. This is how you feel about the new government? You, you, you feel that it's not inclusive and therefore these people are not represented? You see, when, when a, a party is, uh, is standing for elections, it presents the electoral pre-election program. And by the way, the pre-election program of Yanukovych as a candidate for presidency was Russian language as a second state language. And he violated his promises. That's why East of Ukraine voted for him. He violated his promises in two years. Yes, uh, party of regions accepted uh, compromise law on regional status of the languages, and the one of the first decisions of uh, new majority in Rada was to abolish it this law. It was veto yes. vetoed by the president. Yes. Vetoed by so the she president. not vetoed but, that law. But, but it, it did is send a historical the, fact. Let me, let me, Thanks a after, our after our resolution. After our resolution, by question. the way. Uh, 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 I hope after we, we follow some new facts from your long history in Soviet Union, which was fantastic, very interesting. Yeah. But uh, speaking, a lot of speaking, speaking about, uh, about uh, reality, this is, uh, the Ukraine is respecting all the uh, rules of Council of Europe, including these who are protecting the minority, who are protecting the uh, rights of minority, including culture, language and so on. And you know what is interesting? That never I follow the Ukrainian political language. Russian-speaking people in Ukraine, they were never called minority because they are on equal level with all the Ukrainian living in the country. I visited many times the east of uh, Ukraine where Russian is, is, is a language on, on the street. I want to ask you, what should Europe do at this stage of the crisis? We heard 
sanctions, visa, uh, visa bans, uh, asset freezes. Asset freezes. What is the best way to tackle and to convince Mr. Putin that, as you say, he's wrong and he should change his mind? Uh, now uh, we enjoy the, the, the break, the time, time uh, off, which was uh, taken by Mr. Putin. So we have a lot of diplomatic uh, uh, communication. Uh, we have a lot of negotiations. I, I believe this is only uh, to take uh, some, uh, let's say, relax, preparing new aggression, uh, new, new uh, aggressive steps. So you're uh, tell us, telling us diplomacy yeah, is not yeah, working. Yeah, it's not working because I don't believe there is a partner for diplomacy. The people who are using forces and uh, they have no, uh, uh, they, they cannot even they cannot confirm this is our army. That's that's what happened. They are not the partners uh, for diplomacy. I I am a big supporter of a peaceful solution, but to have a peaceful solution, we need to withdraw Russian uh, from, from the Crimea, which is not possible. Mrs. Because they are playing you, totally you, different you, scenario. You know the Russians very well. The threat of sanctions, uh, visa bans. This, this can work? This can be productive? This can work against Europe. It, it, can, it will work. And someone is just wanting that Europe is weakening by all these events taking place here. And the whole story of Eastern Partnership was a story of weakening Europe, of creating uh, artificial barriers instead of uh, creating uh, strategic and you, do, you don't believe that Russian oligarchs, I after a while, when they feel that their residence in London or their listen, accounts in Switzerland what are being we threatened, speak? What can uh, we say? will tell Mr. Putin, yeah. you are making a mistake. Maybe it's better thing to, to leave them to, uh, in London, uh, let them live yeah. in London. Because the yeah. president is highly the, dependent yeah. on these people. But the step of Ukrainian uh, uh, authorities to pu push as a governors in uh, Russian-speaking regions, Donetsk and Dnepropetrovsk, former allies of Yanukovych, oligarchs, is, is showing whether this government is really uh, uh, want to fulfill the willingness, uh, willingness of Maidan Lvov, to, uh, to struggle can against corruption. Can I, can, I say, can I say that, first of all, sanctions clearly do work to a certain extent because it was clear that when Yanukovych's oligarchs felt in danger of their assets being frozen, they rapidly switched sides. They instructed many of the party, the regions, to no longer... Referring to yeah, so, 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 so Akhmetov, Firtash and others, they rapidly switched sides and it was very effective. Now, whether that will work with the Russian oligarchs, I don't know. But I do know that Putin is sensitive about what the world thinks about him. He was clearly demonstrating that during the Sochi Olympics. If he becomes an international pariah and is seen as some kind of military warmonger and start to move his army across into eastern Ukraine, there will have to be very, very tough sanctions, not just economic. I would argue I wrote an article yesterday, the Dardanelles need to be shut down to Russian shipping, the Turks need to be brought on board, the Chinese need to be convinced that Putin's dream is to reconstitute a Soviet empire, and the Soviet empire is not in China's interests and not in the free world's interests either. Mr. Shivyas, the, the weakness of Europe, though, is that Europe is highly dependent on Russia. Uh, Britain has a lot of uh, uh, Russian money, uh, France yes, sells yeah, a lot yeah, of military yeah, equipment. Great, but we are to, we ready? We are we to, ready? Uh, well, to cut all these sides. Let's decide what is uh, important, real estate uh, investment in London or Soviet uh, Russian army in, in Polish borders, European Union borders. And this is dilemma. This is dilemma. And if we discuss how we are depend, uh, de uh, how much we depend on uh, Russian energy, let's speak how much they, uh, have the, the, they depend on our money. And yeah. uh, uh, so if they stop the delivery of the energy, we stop delivery of the money. And, and they go bankrupt. And the, and the, are, Russian, and bankrupt. the Russian state would go bankrupt if they don't export their Gas. They have to sell their gas. If they want to rebuild uh, the isolation of the Soviet Union uh, in the uh, frontiers of the Russian Federation, okay, let's do that. But I don't believe that 160 million Russian people, they want to live in such a world. 70% of Russian people in the most recent opinion poll are against any kind of military intervention or attacks on Ukraine. And if there is to be a war, and God forbid there isn't, it will be a very bloody war. And Putin will live to regret it, in my view. Well, it's Time to bring in our new partner in uh, Talking Europe. Tim King is the editor of European Voice, a weekly paper on EU news. Tim, 
Uh, welcome to uh, our program. Now, your uh, paper, of course, provides independent insight into the Brussels Beltway. I know there will be a lot of articles on Ukraine this week, uh, a moving target, as you call it, at European Voice. But you wanted to talk about something else because it's been a very good week for one person. Well, I'm sort of obliged, albeit in the context of Ukraine and Russia, to talk about rather smaller and less important issues. A good week for Antony Luzzato Gardner, who is the new US ambassador to uh, the <coughs> EU, who has finally arrived arrived in Brussels. We've been waiting for him for seven months since he was nominated and they had problems in the Congress in getting him approved. Delicate time for EU-US relations, plenty to do on Ukraine, plenty to do on trade talks and um, Mr Obama is due at, in Brussels at the, at the end of the month. Absolutely. And it was a bad week for... It's a bad week for the Cypriots. The, the, That's uh, true. And there we are in a, a, a peripheral end. In, in, um, and uh, Also a very divided country, obviously. And they have a problem with a divided government, where a, a junior partner in the coalition government um, uh, f basically withdrew from the government at the end of last week. Uh, controversy about votes uh, on privatisation, privatisations of utilities being enforced by um, austerity programmes from the from the, the EU and others. Um, the, go the government looks like being patched together. They passed the necessary legislation on Tuesday and they should put a new government in place, I think, on the 15th of March. OK. And was your f uh, leading story this week in uh, I think European you, Voice? I, I think you could guess from the assembled <laughs> dis guess. discussion here. Um, <laughs> yes. Ukraine. Ukraine. OK, well, thank you very much. To all of you for taking part in this uh, discussion. It was a very heated debate. You uh, agreed to disagree, but we'll be following, of course, the latest developments in Ukraine in our news bulletins coming up right now. Join me after the news break. That's in about 10 minutes for the second part of Talking Europe.